here with us tonight with more is Dr. Jules Gomez, our Rome correspondent. Very happy to have him on. So, Jules, surely the Bishop of Antwerp will come down heavily on the desecration of his church, right? Bishop Johann Bonny uh, James is the heterodox bishop of a heterodox diocese. In March 2021, when the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faiths issued this marvelous statement condemning blessings for same-sex unions, uh, saying point blank that God cannot bless sin and same-sex unions are sinful, Bishop Bonnie actually had the audacity to say that he is ashamed of the Catholic Church and Catholic teaching. Now, it's not surprising that the Dutch-speaking countries, which were once the bastions of Catholicism, despite the assault of Calvinism, uh, have experienced a catastrophic decline with clergy like Bishop Bonny. So you can bet your last dollar he isn't going to say anything. In fact, he's endorsing this this pagan act in the Catholic Church. That's so sad. So, Jules, what is, what is it about this particular church that makes uh, the sacrilege even more tragic? One of, the, uh, one of my favorite painters is the great Peter Paul Rubens. And uh, he comes from, a pro he came from a Protestant family, but converted to Catholicism and the kind of to troll the Protestants of his day, uh, painted some of the most marvelous paintings, particularly on Catholic, uniquely Catholic topics like the Eucharist and our Blessed Mother. And uh, when my wife and I were in London, we used to go to the National Gallery, and one of the paintings we loved just tanting and looking at was his famous Samson and Delilah. And uh, yesterday, I was at Chiesa Nuova, the parish of Chiesa Nuova, and not far from the Vatican, and I was admiring his painting of uh, the Madonna della Vallicella, which is our Blessed Mother in all her splendor, surrounded by the angels. Now, this church was a beacon for centuries. It pointed people to Christ. It was a stopover on the pilgrim route to Santiago de Compostela. Mm. And uh, now it's pointing people away from Christ to Hinduism. Uh, it's absolutely tragic, James. Absolutely. So, Jules, how are Hindus responding to Catholics jumping on the yoga bandwagon here? I bet they're sort of chuckling to themselves. Well, uh, yes and no. Their the response is very interesting. On the one hand, they use uh, yoga to present a sanitized form of Hinduism to Westerners. And believe me, I, I, I know this, uh, Hinduism in the West is seriously attempting to proselytize. Uh, they tell me point blank, they, said, uh, they say the West is post-Christian and we are now the new missionaries because people are open to the New Age movement and Hinduism is at the heart of the New Age movement. But interestingly, there's also a very fierce backlash to the Christian, so-called Christian, a, a cultural appropriation of yoga. And Hindus are saying, hey, hold on, yoga is an intrinsic part of our religion. It is, uh, as the great ex exponent of Yoga Patanjali put it, it is a means, a vehicle to salvation. Uh, the very word yoga uh, means uh, to join, union, make my Atman spirit, uh, one with that principle, abstract principle, Hindus call Brahman. So uh, imagine if a Hindu temple had a crucifix there, uh, how would we respond as Catholics, James? Or if a Hindu priest put on a chasuble and sat down uh, performing his rites, how would we respond? And Hindus are telling Catholics the same thing. Don't use uh, yoga as a means of meditation or as an exercise, because that is precisely what it is not. Uh, don't use it thinking it leads to Jesus, or you can use it to meditate upon Jesus, because it is a means to an end, and that end is rightfully ours, and our end is totally different from your end, your goal. 
uh, salvation in Christianity and moksha in Hinduism are two completely different things and never the twain shall meet. Yeah. Thank you very much, Jules, for uh, laying all that out for us. Truly tragic situation happening over there. So thank you very much for coming on. Thank you, James. God bless you. God bless.